How are you, Sam? Very good. We've got part two of assembling of the RB30 slash 25 cylinder head on, twin cam. So what I've got here, obviously we've washed the block, which um, it has got a lot of rust in it, but we've taken most of it out. The acids, we have got acid tanks that we're using here. Rust is cancer for the engines. I cannot do nothing about it, so. I'm not gonna shop peen blocks in it. I don't believe in it, because it damages the surfaces on a lot of um, blocks in it. You're never gonna get all the shop peen out of it, so we don't do it to them. Just to explain to some people, saying, oh, rust, this, that, whatever. But what we're doing today, we're gonna check the instructions here, what we're gonna do for what application. Um, it's gonna be a turbo application, obviously. So we're gonna do the, the clearances in the ring. This is your minimum here. We're gonna go for blown race only. Six thou and six thou, and that's per inch. So this is a three inch, 405 thou. That means we've got to do the ring gaps at 20 thou minimum. Now I've checked the, the ring on um, out of the box, pulled it out. We're going to pop it in like this. I'm going to flip it over. I use a piston to level it out. Like that. And we'll check the gap. And believe it or not, they're actually exactly on 20 thou. I couldn't believe my luck on this. So I don't have to do this. But the compression rings, different story. We have to gap them because they're too tight. It's not good. You can't have, remember I spoke about the rings. If you got them too tight, it'll actually rip the top of the piston off. So we're going to level it. I'm going to check it. I can't get it in there, so we have to we have to grind them. So this is what we use is a ring file grinder. You can do it with the hand one. They do sell ones with hands. You got to set them up properly, so you can't just bolt it in. This one here is adjustable, so we've got the flat part. In other words, you see they ring there the edge. I'm not going to bolt it like that and grind them on an angle. You got to set them up properly. So I've set this up. This is how you operate it. So we're going to hit it. Got a little gauge there, I've got to set up on zero. Take it off. We polish the sides here. A little bit there. A little bit there, and pop it in. It takes me a long time. Not quite, so I'm gonna keep going. This is this is part of blueprinting, what we call blueprinting. Try again, so that's two cuts. Now imagine you're gonna do all the rings. How many hours it takes you? It's a lot of work involved. Just about there. I wouldn't mind taking a little bit more off it. These things are not cheap, Sam. Right expensive to, uh, tool, is ooh, it? Very expensive. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. We've got a spot on. So we need three guys. Alright, let's go for it. I'll quickly zap them up. The next one. Okay, I'm putting the rings on. So th these rings don't matter which way they go up that way. There's no marking on them, no chamfer. I will position them when I just before I put them in. And We'll have it happening, but just to get them out of our feet so we don't break them or anything, damage them in any way, or whack them on. No. Here we go, just wind them in nice and gentle. Done. Okay, these go on a certain way, too, Sam. Yep, and put it in, put down, let's get the clip in. I like putting him in like this. I put him in sideways, push it down, spin it around, just push it down like that, into there, flip it over, push the gauge in, here we clip in, put this one on like that, gotta wind this in a bit, they're very hard to put in these ones. Up, a little notch there, lever it, in it goes, that's it. That is really, really hard to pull out, like if you have to pull them out, 
we'll do your head in, you know. So we're running, we're running a king bearing on it. I'll put some slime in it. Crank's been balanced. I didn't, I didn't put that in the video because you've seen some of the balancing I've done before. Let's put some slime in there because this one here's going to be a while before we start it. You don't, you don't put too much of that green stuff in it either. You've got to be careful with it. You put too much on it, it does dry out. Crankshaft. Polished, balanced, ready to go in. Nice and gentle. Here we go. I have measured it. Already, so we don't have to do any other measurements on it either. Okay. Next step, we're going to put a stud kit in it. Now, it's an ARP stud kit. Now, these go down towards the bottom. They have got three that are extra long in them, and I don't remember how they go. We don't, we don't put anything on them really on the bottom of the threads. There's nothing. There's no need. These bottom out on the bottom of the block. You do not tension these, by the way. That's it. You don't really need... That's it. You don't need them to be tight. Just sit there bottom out. That's it. Finish. Game over. Next step, we need the stud girdle. Which I haven't got here. I'll go get it. Now, which way does it go on? It goes on that way. Let's pop it on. Okay. Now, in the ARP stud kit, it comes with the washers. Let me sit them in there. Next step, it comes in with this assembly paste, which we're going to we're just going to stick it here for now. Makes it easier for us to paste on, huh? And then we'll clean it up. A little bit on the threads. On the washer. Pretty basic. Don't put too much on it. There's no need for it. Because these are bugger all tension. So, now, it comes with the nuts. So much clearing. <laughs> That's what I say. The forgies are really nice and noisy, aren't they? Slap around the bitch. Oh, yeah. You ready? Sam and have a look and see if the top and center comes up good. Look how easy it turns, how beautifully the little clearances are nice. Right, look at that. Look at that. So my calculations. Look at that. Just a little bit of below the deck, what I wanted. Gentle, gentle. Done. They're done. Okay. Yeah. Seal. Remote seal. That does come with a gasket set in the kit. Sam? But, um, yeah, that paper one? Yep. But for that, but they came out from Fatch with silicon on the back of it. That's it. So don't worry about it. I'll just use a silicon again on it, man. The way I always done it, always stick to the basics, you know what I mean? Not com don't complicate it. You do not use silicon on gaskets that run oil through them. So we're going to use Permatex to do this. 
non hardening cement. So we put this on. I think we're going to put some in there. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> I'm using a Russell pan down here locally. I'm not gonna try to use a local goods. Well, I was trying to support the people here then the Chinese say the Chinese cheap sumps you know which they make a lot of them I know they're cheap but it made a beautiful sump for us the bloke and it's not that much money in my eyes you know I think it's um and supporting local business so there's one for Russell Pants some parts are pretty basic. This is about it. I've still got to drill a hole in the front of the motor for the Isla bearing. Let's get a restricted kit in it. It's not a big deal. There goes George. In the Camaro. Mm. Not bad. We might be able to see it.